Joel Embiid dominant against the LA Lakers in a big victory for the Philadelphia 76ers. They have the best record against Western Conference teams for any team in the East. In late game, Luka struck again, GA. I know you're excited about that. Well, I'm, I'm a fan of watching this young man oh. play the game. And I tell you what, a lot of excitement right now in Dallas. Porzingis is going to be on that roster next year. They've got a new edition of the dynamic duo. And from the new edition to the old head, Dwayne Wade set to square off against the Golden State Warriors tonight right here on NBA TV. We know what Steph Curry does before the game to get ready as well. And we're here to get you ready for that. Welcome to Game Time. It's Southpaw Sunday. I'm Chris Miles, and that's <laughs> Southpaw right there, and Greg Anthony, and it's another Southpaw and Derek Fisher. Look, I wouldn't want to box with you guys. Oh, right? man. It's <laughs> rare that we get two Southpaws. Yeah, right? so very rare. We're going to enjoy this. Yeah, and a five-time champion on set as well, Derek, in looking at the Golden State Warriors, they've won three in the last four years, and they seem to be on one of those incredible runs, a dynasty even. Can we start to call them that yet? Do you think they've earned that right? Well, I think there's a core group of the Warriors that are in that conversation and have earned that right to, to be in that discussion. Uh, you talk about Curry, Thompson, Green, uh, even though the roster around those three guys has really evolved over the last three or four seasons with different glue guys around them. Now, now you have to start to think about Kevin Durant in that last, you know, two to three years. Andre Godala? Andre Godala as well is in that core group of guys. And so they, what they have accomplished, you know, we keep saying we won't see it again. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about young players, the, the, the turnover in professional sports now. Uh, but they're also proving that we will see it again. Yeah. Because these guys are serious about what they do. And, and they strive to be excellent at this job, and the Warriors are doing so. And, and they are a dynasty. You know, let, let's face it. I mean, you, you win three out of four, uh, and they're the odds on favor to get back to the finals this year. That's what a dynasty is. And, and, in, and quite frankly, in today's era, that's, that's arguably be even more difficult than 20 years ago winning three because the level of talent, I think, overall is higher. You, you're starting to see it play out this year where even though they're still the odds on favorite, Teams are getting closer. Yes. You know, you look at the top of the Eastern Conference, teams like Denver. Denver is a lot like Golden State was four years ago. Going into the season, of Golden State's first championship, no one thought Golden State was going to be champion that year. No one was predicting that they would be the winner, just like no one predicted that Denver would be in a dogfight for the one seed at this stage of the season. But those young guns are starting to prove that they are legit, and with each game, they're gaining confidence. I'm going to mention two of your favorite words. Don't get too excited, right? <laughs> Shot quality. Yeah. How has that changed with DeMarcus Cousins in the lineup? Look, in, in 12 of the last 14 games, the Warriors have 30 or more assists. In, no, in nine of those games, DeMarcus Cousins has, has been on the floor. And, and I think you hit it. it. It is really about the value of the shots. They're already great shooters, but unlike a lot of teams, they don't really ever have to take what we call 9-1-1 shots. They're going to allow the basketball to dictate who takes the shot, and because in essence they're always going to have four guys who they're more than comfortable, comfortable taking that shot, and now you have a situation where Boogie's got to buy it because it's not about ego right now. It's about winning. And he, I think, in a lot of ways will benefit long term from this experience well, as well because the only time he's ever been on a team like this has been USA Basketball. And if he's getting 15 and 7, that's the equivalent of what he averaged last year with New Orleans, you know, because, again, he doesn't have to carry the load. He's not going to face double and triple teams. So his shot quality, along with the rest of that team, is going to improve. Boy, they, they are becoming a juggernaut. I, I'm anxious to see what team's going to be able to stand up and compete with them once they get going. That's a great point that you mentioned his stats at 15 and 7. It seems like it's a far cry from what Boogie was doing last year when he was at 28 and 13. And you're like, oh, he's an MVP candidate. Fish, when you're trying to win a championship and you have to give up some of those numbers and you're trying to compete at that level, what does it do for the entire team when Boogie's able to do that and have that mentality? Well, I think it's a, it's a way of showing leadership. 
right? It, every team uh, has, they have captains or they have key guys that are the voice, uh, the strength of the team. Draymond Green gets a lot of that credit. Uh, Steph Curry is kind of quieter than Draymond, but at those two guys, it's their team. And then Durant has come on. Iguodala is also a kind of a leadership guy. But when Boogie Cousins is able to step into the situation, buy in from the beginning, and not try and be the DeMarcus Cousins that existed prior to being in Golden State, but really step onto the floor and fit into what the Warriors have already built prior to his arrival, it says a lot about him. It says a lot about what they've created there in Oakland. Uh, and it's making it more difficult to play against them. Yeah. He improves the spacing for a team that already plays with great spacing and ball movement. Uh, and so it's even harder to defend them now with him on the floor compared to when he isn't. With that, we'll continue our Warriors talk with Anthony Slater, who covers them for The Athletic. Anthony, great to have you on the show. Warriors, again, rolling one. 14 of their last 15. This team back to their dominant ways. They've dished out more than 30 assists in 12 of their recent games. Why is the ball movement so good right now and improved so drastically? Um, I mean, I, I think uh, mostly, like, Cousins' uh, debut kind of charged them up focus-wise uh, at a time of the season, as, as you guys kind of all know, where, you know, Steve Kerr calls it the dog days, it's the, the weeks before the All-Star game. Everyone's kind of begging for that vacation time to come. Um, but right now they're just, you know, DeMarcus is really energized, and that's kind of energized the team. And when they are focused, uh, they play pretty basketball, you know, and they zip it around. And, uh, you know, Clay Thompson's shooting unbelievable. He had, that, uh, he had that slump early in the season. I think he's 50% from three since the start of January. Uh, that helps the assist when your shooters are just knocking it down. Steph's obviously playing well, KD. Uh, and then Cousins has really uh, helped their second unit, where now uh, when they put KD and Steph on the bench at the same time, you can still now play through DeMarcus Guts. You know, Kevin Durant's looming free agency and the rumor mill seem to be a point of contention for the Warriors early this season. Have they simply just moved past that and focused on a championship, or is there something else we're not seeing with this team and their focus? Well, I mean, it's just it just depends on when it pops up. Obviously, it was a huge thing that loomed over the team uh, early in the season, where I think it was about game 11, where that Draymond Katie, uh, you know, dust up, whatever you want to call it, on the bench happened. And uh, it was a really kind of awkward mood in the locker room for maybe a couple weeks. And Steph was hurt at the same time. And they, I think they went something like, you know, seven and eight over a 15 game stretch. But then, you know, time kind of healed that wound. I think they talked it out a little bit, and it wasn't a topic. But then, of course, uh, with what the Knicks have done, maneuvering with that Porzingis trade uh, has bubbled up the rumor that Katie's really looking at New York this summer. And then obviously Katie didn't talk to the media and it became kind of a swirling story around here and even league wide. And then uh, Katie had that blow up the other night uh, to the media, which I actually think uh, helped alleviate some of the locker room pressure. I think that the guys kind of enjoyed that he came out and so forcefully uh, went at us a little bit. And uh, they seemed they were in a really good mood in Phoenix the other night. And we'll see tonight. One thing you said there, let's focus on that. The Warriors were 7-7 seven and seven in the month of November. And at that time period, Steph Curry was out. Draymond Green missed some time. And, of course, Boogie wasn't healthy yet. And the question for this team was, do they have enough depth? So have they, if they have an injury when you go into the postseason, do you believe they have enough depth to overcome any of those injuries? I mean, it depends on kind of where they get it. Right now their center is thin, and it was really thin when Cousins was out because the guy that was starting early in the year, Damian Jones, tore his pec. So he's basically out for the year. Uh, Looney stepped in well, but Jordan Bell's kind of had a disappointing year, too. So they're sitting there really playing one center for a while, and Looney, and he's kind of undersized. Uh, Cousins has, has helped push Looney kind of down the totem pole where he fits well into a bench role. Uh, but they still struggle with size. I mean, Joel and Deed came into Oakland uh, in their lone loss they've had really in the last month. Uh, and really push them around inside, especially Looney. So I, I think they're a little vulnerable at the center, but, you know, there's there's rumors they're thinking about trying to go in the buyout market if Robin Lopez can wiggle free from Chicago. I think he'd help maybe shore that up. But, uh, I, you know, I think they got a pretty, pretty deep, you know, nine, ten-man rotation they're comfortable with in the playoffs. Certainly we'll have to keep an eye on the Warriors and their depth at the center position then. Anthony Slater, appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, fellas. Thanks for having me. Speaking of the big fella, Joel Embiid, he gives a lot of teams problems, including another West Coast squad, the L.A. Lakers. They saw him firsthand in a matinee this Sunday. Oh, dominant teams in different times. The Golden State Warriors, Miami Heat. Okay, if you that's LeBron James, Dwayne Wade's teams. If you take your mind out of it and forget that LeBron and Wade were on those teams and just look at the numbers, and it looks like the Golden State Warriors... 
on a piece of paper have the more dominant dynasty between those two teams. So the first question for you, has Golden State already passed Miami as far as their dynasty and their window? Oof. Listen, they are a dynasty, and they're going to go down as one of the great teams of all time. Uh, it, it's hard to compare teams from an era standpoint because my feeling is always if you take a team from a different era to play against a team from this era, what rules are you going to play by? Okay, because if you took this Golden State team and you put them in the 80s or the 90s, if they had to play by those rules, you might give the edge to some of those earlier teams. But if you got to play by the rules today, I can't see a scenario where anybody's going to beat that team <laughs> based on how the game's played today with their ability to space the floor and shoot it. Uh, and now having DeMarcus Cousins, I mean, that's going to be a hard challenge for anybody to overcome because the physicality is not in the game and the court's so much bigger today, Derek, than it was when, when we played. Yeah. When you might worry about one guy making a couple threes. Now, you got guys in the league that are averaging five threes, uh, made threes a game. And I, I remember playing in games where we didn't make five threes in a game. <laughs> so it, it's just a different era. So where are you on this? If we're just looking at the actual numbers, Miami, Golden State, the four-year run, not considering what the Warriors might do uh, this postseason. I mean, it's, it's tough. It is tough to try and pick one and say it's better than the other. Uh, I think they're different, like it says, you know, different teams, different times. Uh, just five years ago, we're talking about, it's 2019. This Heat team was in the finals in 2014. And, and think about even the difference in the way that they're playing. I don't know why you guys had to pick that Thunder footage. I was on that. <laughs> but, uh, but just how different the game uh, has evolved since then in terms of the way the Heat had to play in order to win titles and the way this Warriors team is playing to win its titles. Um, I would say this Warriors team is maybe more efficient offensively in terms of their perimeter shooting, but the Heat defensively were physical and stifling. So I, I don't know if it's a better or, 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 or you know, than, than Warriors Heat being better than the other team. I just think it's, they're doing it in different ways, and we forget quickly how great Miami was. Yeah. And, and we can't forget right now how good this Warriors team is playing. <laughs> and, and keep in mind, in, in, in fairness, too, like the Warriors as a group, the teams they played in the finals weren't as good as the teams that Miami played in the finals. True yeah, those, those Spurs teams. No, those that Spurs teams. Team with three MVPs on it. Yeah, and, and four Hall of Famers. So they had a team in terms of the overall talent and the basketball IQ that was much more similar. The first year that they played Cleveland, remember, there was no Kyrie and there was no Kevin Love. I think Kyrie only played a part of one or two games. The first games. game, yes. The first game. So, like, but that's all part of the story. We, You go through the history. You've played on teams that benefited from injuries in the yes. postseason and were hurt by it. That's a part of the game. So, but, but again, Golden State's, dominance, it's going to stand the test of time because they've been brilliant. And they've also kind of changed the way the game is played. You talked about it during the break. You know, there was a, t a time where people didn't think jump shooting teams could win a championship. Well, that's been thrown out the window. Now they have become the model for which a lot of teams are trying to now uh, uh, mimic to get to that championship level. So, Fish, tell me this. When, when you came to the Lakers, right, 96, you yes. were drafted, and you look at what you were building towards. When did you realize, oh, this is special, this is a dynasty team? Is it after you win the first one, after you win the second one, after you three-peat? When did you feel like, wow, we have something special that's a dynasty? Well, I think it was after we lost in 1999. There was a lockout summer. And then coming off of that, um, when, when Phil Jackson was hired as the head coach, we had suffered through three playoff losses prior to his arrival. And I knew we had the physical talent in order to win. And then when you combine that with the leadership and the coaching and the IQ from the sideline with Phil and his staff, I felt like I knew then, prior to us winning, that we had all of the ingredients to be special and be great for a long time. When you talk about Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, uh, Phil bringing in veteran guys like Ron Harper, who was on the dynasty teams of the Bulls, uh, John Sally. A.C. Green, dynasty teams of <coughs> Lakers in the late 80s. So we had this combination of wisdom, experience, uh, and success that, you know, blended with some young talent. And I felt like I knew then we had a chance to be great. And, and keep in mind, they got swept the year before Phil was hired in the second round yes. by Utah. They were swept. 
Phil comes in the next year, and they win a world championship. And so he obviously played a huge role in determining whether or not they got to that next level. And a lot of it was because of the credibility he brought after having won those championships in Chicago. Well, you mentioned those championships in Chicago, and you had to face those early 90s Bulls teams. When did you realize, wait, this is a little different. This, these, this team that I'm facing right now, this is a dynasty because the Knicks were right there yeah. in those series, a couple of ball bounces the other way, and you guys win some of those. Yeah, and I, and I think Derek will uh, agree with this. Like, you don't think of yourself or another team as being dynastic or dominant. Mm -hmm. Like, you, when you really believe you can win, like, you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about what we have to do to, to win. You know, you, we played them, them, I think, two or three times in seventh games. And so, you know, you're not really focused on, oh, that's Michael Jordan. You know, I'm in awe. You're not looking at it that way. I remember even when I was in Portland playing against the, the, the Lakers with, with Derek and, and Kobe and Shaq. Part of our game, we're going at Shaq. We're going at Kobe. Yeah. We're going to attack him on offense. We could, you know, like, so you're not, we respect the ability so of the great Michael Jack. You're saying years later, or is it as soon as it's over? Like once they win three, you kind of see it then, or is it? No, when you don't you're see it. You, and you're done? you, you, again, you, you're so in the moment. Like you're not really like in the, after they won a championship the next year. He's not sitting around thinking about man, we won that championship. You're like focusing on today, trying to win another championship. Yes. You really are in the present. You're really focused on what you're dealing with now. Now there are teams. And he's facing, when we face him, when, when you know they don't believe they can beat you. Cool. Like, through a lot of, I bet you through a lot of his runs, the teams they worry most about would be San Antonio and Sacramento. Cause, for a year. Cause two, for yes. a year or two, right? Because you would say to yourself, you know what, if we ain't right, they, can get, they us. can get us. You know, and so that's the mindset. Now, when you are eight versus one, like that eight seed a lot of times doesn't believe right. that they can win. But when you start, there's uh, two or three teams every year that you look at and you say, you know, if we're not right, they can get us. And that motivation oftentimes is what helps you get over the hump. And that's the beauty of the game. Intriguing. I wonder who the Golden State Warriors look at this year and think, hmm, if we're not right, they can get us. Because certainly last year, that team was the Houston Rockets. And prior to that, it was Kevin Durant's team. Yeah, with they the played OKC in the seventh Thunder. game the last two and, years in the conference yeah, finals. So. We've seen the Warriors down in series able to pull them out uh, against the, the Cavs. We saw it in, the, in their first finals. We saw it against the Thunder. Uh, in the Western Conference Finals, you know, so... And the Rockets. I think, and I think and the to Rockets. GA's point, though, that that has spread around the league a little bit. And I think there are a few teams yeah. that the Warriors know, whether it's in the Western Conference, if the Rockets are healthy and at full strength and playing well, or the Thunder as a dark horse. But the East has kind of evolved and grown with LeBron going West. I mean, Toronto, Milwaukee, and now Philadelphia, these are serious contenders to be able to win a title either of those three teams that were able to get out of the East and you, see the Warriors in the finals. You could make the argument, let's give Golden State, anoint them the best team. You could make the argument that the next three, arguably four best teams in the NBA are in the East. Stamp of approval there by the, GA. The, the East is, and then if you look at the revamp moves they've made up to the deadline, all those teams, the Raptors have improved. Milwaukee's an improving basketball team. Obviously, Philadelphia, we saw tonight. Like, those teams and these young players now believe that they can do it, just like Golden State did four years ago when no one thought they were going to be the world champs, and they went out, they believed it, and they captured the title. A young player not necessarily in the championship role, yes, but yet but believes that he can do it on a night-in basis. Luka Doncic proving it against the Portland Trail Blazers. You see him excited in them now, and there's a reason for that.